Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss reversible lanes or flexible lanes and in some countries it is also called tidal flow operation. These are innovative methods of traffic flow management. The flexible lane offers the possibility to increase the capacity of the traffic flow going in a specific direction during peak hours. For example, if you consider this four lane road, in a normal condition, two lanes are for travel in each direction. But when traffic conditions becomes heavy in one direction, particularly during morning peak or during evening peak, then one of these two lanes can be reversed. So if the traffic is heavy, let us say during morning hours, in this direction, then the direction of this lane is changed to this condition. So three lanes are now in one direction and one lane is in this direction. And similarly during evening time, the this lane can be reversed and therefore three lanes will be now in this direction and one lane in this direction. The number of lanes assigned to each direction of travel varies with the time of day depending upon the level of congestion in a particular direction. The great advantage of tidal flow operation is that extra capacity is provided on the same roadway without providing any extra road width. And reversing of lanes reduces congestion for handling special event traffic during morning and evening commutes, when an accident blocks a lane or when construction or maintenance activity is present on the road. These are provided on roads having problem of recurring congestion in a particular direction during morning and in the reverse direction in the evening. On bridges, in tunnels and toll booth areas which are difficult to widen, surrounding or leading to or from special event centers like a stadium or entertainment center expecting crowds at a particular time or for emergency use like in case of hurricane evacuation. How does it help? When you need more capacity in a particular direction of travel, borrow a lane from opposite direction. And this borrowing of the lane will reduce the congestion because it will enhance the capacity. Second is post it postpones the need to add capacity through conventional lane additions and it can hasten evacuation during weather events or other natural disasters. There are two advantages which are reported for reversible lanes. Number one, extra traffic capacity is provided when it is required most, that is during congestion period. And second, the intention of providing this reversible lane is not to make the traffic one way. Traffic in the minor direction does not have to go to a complementary street but it can continue to move, but with reduced number of lanes. Some issues are also flagged by the traffic managers who are working in the field. And the first is implementation can be expensive. It is because reversing the direction of a lane requires proper communication with drivers and that communication will change at least two times a day. Whenever there is a change in congestion or direction of congestion, you need to communicate the drivers accordingly. Poor implementation can result in increasing number of head-on crashes. Central pedestrian refusing have to be removed. No parking restrictions are normally imposed. Since the number of lanes are reduced by one in the minor direction, on street parking should be prohibited for smooth traffic flow. And same is the case with bus stop or bus laybys. These are not suitable for roads divided by central median. Agencies face several challenges as part of reversible lane operations and the first is safety concerns for motorists during reversal operations. The second is that whenever direction of travel in a lane is changed, it will require placing or removing the barriers, change of traffic lights and that makes even traffic surveillance very complex. So the task is very labor intensive and time consuming and it also 
make the daily surveillance very complex. Then proper communication and public participation are crucial to ensure the success of lane reversal process. Local agencies should identify the best locations for implementation and ensure the public and agencies understand the concept and operations. The terminus treatment requires particular care and attention. Common treatments extend across intersections requiring complex signals and signal timing strategies and if properly executed, these intersections may become very expensive and confusing. Then locating a safe mid-block right turn across the favored travel direction can also be difficult. And impacted businesses may complain of denial to traffic and there is an increased potential for crashes depending upon right turn or you can say left turn for right hand drive conditions, uh, right hand demand, mid-block geometric conditions and plateauing of favored traffic direction. Several factors influence the planning and design of reversible lanes and these factors include cost and the level of complexity and sophistication of traffic control, functional type of roadway on which it is used, purpose and or intended goals for which it is used, agency responsible for the planning, design, implementation and management that will also affect the design of reversible lanes. The decision to consider reversible lanes is usually based on the need to mitigate recurrent congestion. Its use is most applicable on multi-lane highways with a directional imbalance in excess of 65-35% with a predominance of through traffic and predictable congestion pattern. And reasons agency give for using reversible lanes include congestion mitigation, queue length, the need to decrease travel time and to improve the overall corridor level of service. Operation of reversible lanes can be controlled by three different methods. The first is traffic lights suspended over each reversible lane at the beginning and end of the section and as necessary at intersections along the route and is the most flexible means of controlling lane usage. The signal may be the normal pattern or of a pattern comprising of a green arrow and a red cross. A signal indication showing a red cross indicates that the use of the reversible lane is prohibited while an indication of a green arrow pointing downward indicates that use of the reversible lane is permitted. The second is movable barriers. Movable barriers of various types are also used to separate lanes of opposing traffic and simplest dividers are traffic cones and these are hand laid along the new lane. These dividers supplemented with signs are very effective however they are labor intensive and costly on an ongoing basis. Then the third is movable rigid barriers. Now these may be economically justified on a very heavy trafficked route where the capital and maintenance cost are favorably balanced against the saving in accidents, travel time, property execution and road construction. The transfer vehicle is fitted with a line of roller which runs under the top of the T profile of each unit, fix them, conveys them in a S curve and puts them down exactly one lane across from the original position. That is how movable rigid barriers work and these have been adopted in many countries like France, UK, USA and many others. So friends, this is all about reversible lanes. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can write in the comment box.